So guys, with uh, some much more added energy again, we're going to talk uh, about the choroid, okay? And let me write the topic choroid here, and uh, without any ado, let me draw a figure. This is your choroid and cor sorry, sclera and cornea. This is your sclera, and this is your cornea. And this is your choroid, okay, and this is your ciliary body, and this is the iris, okay, this is the iris, and yeah, let me make your lens, and uh, let me suspend your lens by the suspensor ligaments, okay, and uh, here is your retinal layer. And with some depression that signifies the optic disc, and uh, here is your fovea centralis, and again, here is your ura serrata. So, what I'm going to show you in this picture is the choroid. The choroid is the part of this ubil tract that extends from the ura serrata to the optic disc okay and here be your optic nerve okay so um, and uh, as I already told this uh, choroid part extends uh, from the optic disc and to the aura serrata and the inner surface of this choroid you know this inner surface inner surface by inner surface I mean this surface okay this surface is smooth and brown okay and uh, lies in contact with the pigment epithelium of the retina okay this is retina and it's clear to you yeah and the outer surface is you know rough and lies in contact with the sclera as you can see here okay now let's talk something about microscopic structure okay so the microscopic structure, as you already uh, discussed um, before, uh, it consists of three layers. The first one being suprachoroidal layer, stroma, and basal lamina. Okay, and the suprachoroidal layer, you know, it is a thin membrane. Okay, it is a thin membrane, and uh, it is the condensed collagen fibers okay condensed collagen fibers melanocytes and fibroblast I hope you are getting me okay and uh, you know the third point about this to make is uh, it is continuous with anteriorly uh, you know to the supraciliary lamina Okay, you know, supraciliary lamina, or uh, yeah, I just uh, told that supraciliary lamina is the first layer of this, um, you know, this uh, ciliary body part, right? So the upper layer of this choroid is the, uh, sorry, is anteriorly continuous with the upper layer of this, uh, you know, ciliary body. And then the point what I just told was um, uh, trying to make you understand about this fact. Okay, and uh, you know this um, uh, choroid above this choroid uh, and uh, below this sclera. You know here is a space. Okay, this is sclera and this is choroid. And between these two there is a space. Okay, uh, I can show this space by coloring by another pain yeah here is a space and that space is called suprachoroidal space and in that suprachoroidal space we can see long and short posterior arteries and nerves okay so now now let's uh, get into the second layer stroma of the choroid okay um, the stroma you know consists of stroma consists of you know loose collagenous and uh, you know 
collaginous and uh, yeah collaginous tissue and you know elastic uh, and uh, uh, reticular fibers okay uh, stroma consists of the loose collagenous tissue elastic and reticular fibers and uh, you know some books write it also contains pigment okay it contains pigment yes it does actually uh, rather pigment cells and uh, you know plasma cell even okay, and uh, you know another fact about this is the main bulk of this layer stroma is formed by vessels and these vessels are you know arranged in three different layers okay three different vessels layer the first one is layer of large vessel and layer of you know medium sized vessel okay and another layer of Choreo capillaries, choreo capillaries layer, okay, and the layer of larger vessels is named specifically as Heller's layer, okay. You got to remember this because it's very important in the exam, and uh, you know the layer of medium vessel is called Sattler's layer, okay, Sattler's layer, and. Uh, this has no any specific name, so you're gonna remember this by the name Choreo Capillaries layer. Now let's get into the third layer that is basal lamina. Okay, so basal lamina it is also called uh, you know Brock's membrane, B R E C H S Brock's membrane. Okay, and uh, it lines the layer of Choreo Capillaries layer. Okay, um, yeah, it'd be more clear if I draw this figure. Uh, okay, suppose this is your sclera, and uh, this is your sclera, and this is your, um, you know, choroid. And this choroid is divided into, uh, you know, three layers. Let me use another color pen. Okay, um, first layer, suprachoroidal layer, and the, and the one, two, and three. Okay, these three are different layers of blood vessels, and the lower one, this is basal lamina. Okay, this basal lamina is lining the scorio capillary layer, and Sattler layer okay and the Heller's layer and above this there is supra choroidal layer okay so uh, this is the first layer and this is the second layer in all together and this is the third okay supra choroidal and the uh, stroma and the basal lamina and this stroma is further divided into three layers as i already described in previous space Heller's, sattler and crony sorry choreo capillaries okay uh, so this is about uh, ciliary uh, sorry uh, this is about choroid okay now, yeah, uh, now that we have finished uh, talking about the ebil tract, uh, the best guy that we have, right? Now, let me talk about the blood supply. Blood supply of the ebil tract. Okay, so basically, uh, the ubil tract is uh, supplied by three sets of arteries okay three sets of arteries number one being short posterior ciliary arteries okay and uh, the next one is long 
posterior ciliary arteries and uh, the third one is anterior ciliary artery and you know what these short ciliary arteries and these long ciliary, long posterior ciliary arteries these arise uh, from the ophthalmic artery okay i suppose uh, this is the optic nerve and uh, they arise um, yeah from here and this is sort posterior ciliary artery and this is a posterior ciliary artery and this is your eyeball this is your eyeball and uh, these arises you know this artery after arising as the two different trunks okay from the ophthalmic artery its trunk you know divide into 10 to 20 branches do you hear me 10 to 20 branches and these branches which parse the you know sclera which parse the sclera around the optic nerve okay around the optic nerve this parts the sclera around the optic nerve and supplies the choroid you know yeah this supply the choroid and uh, similarly the long posterior ciliary arteries they also arise from the ophthalmic artery okay this is ophthalmic and this is also ophthalmic artery they also arise from the ophthalmic artery and they you know they pierce the you know medial and sorry the fires the sclera you now in oblique fashion let me use the red pen again in oblique fashion okay on either side of the optic nerve okay the pierces obliquely on the medial and the lateral side of the optic nerve okay and uh, you know they run forward in the suprachoroidal space okay for one in the suprachoroidal space and do you remember what is suprachoroidal space yeah the space just above the choroid and below the sclera they run along the suprachoroidal space and reaches the ciliary muscle you know i cannot draw here okay let me draw the figure here okay okay you know this is the suprachoroidal layer suprachoroidal space and uh, from here by the side of the optic nerve the long posterior ciliary arteries they pass obliquely uh, yeah let me make it more oblique as it is in real anatomy it passes obliquely and uh, it runs along the space suprachoroidal space and uh, reaching the point near the ciliary muscles at last okay and that when it reaches here it uh, you know anastomosis with um, the you know muscles uh, sorry it anastomos with the arteries anterior ciliary arteries okay and anterior ciliary arteries these are the branches that arise from the muscular arteries uh, okay and then this is anterior ciliary artery and that this uh, long posterior uh, ciliary artery is anastomos with the anterior ciliary artery and uh, give rise to the branches which supplies the ciliary body okay now let's get into the anterior ciliary artery now 
Okay, let me talk something about this anterior ciliary artery. You know, uh, to make this clear, I have to draw a figure, okay? Uh, suppose this is the superior rectus muscle, and this is your optic nerve, and uh, this is the lateral rectus, this is the medial rectus, and this is the inferior rectus, okay? And this is inferior oblique and yeah let's suppose this is this is the superior oblique so um, yeah if this is the ophthalmic artery and the muscular branch of the ophthalmic artery supplies this inferior rectus this inferior oblique and uh, yeah, sorry i should make the same brands okay um, and this is not a separate artery this is the main muscular artery and its branches supplies this inferior oblique and this lateral rectus okay and again another artery that supplies lateral rectus superior oblique and this superior rectus now what happens is the tendon the tendon in this muscle the tendon in this muscle the tendon in this muscle and tendon in this muscle from these tendons arises next artery from the superior rectus comes out two arteries from the tendon of the medial rectus comes out two arteries and uh, from the you know uh, from the uh, inferior one this tendon comes out two arteries and but from this lateral rectus there comes only one okay so all this all these branches are the anterior ciliary arteries and all together you can count all together there are seven anterior ciliary arteries one two three four five six seven okay and these anterior ciliary arteries comes in a bundle okay suppose this is a single bundle of this okay and uh, let me draw the sclera. Suppose this is the sclera. This is the sclera, and uh, okay, this comes along the sclera and gives some branches to the sclera. Okay, and again, I'm coming here. It gives some branches to the conjunctive ibon. Okay, and uh, even some branches, you know, they fires the sclera near the limbus okay suppose here is a limbus okay this is the sclera this is the sclera and um, okay suppose this is the cornea okay or let's say this is iris okay and you know what happens is this yeah this um, bundle of anterior ciliary arteries pierces the sclera not far from the limbus you know it is not far from the limbus and you know it crosses the suprachoroidal space okay this if this is here uh, this is the choroidal space suprachoroidal space it and you know it terminates in the anterior part of ciliary body okay anterior part of ciliary body is uh, like here okay if this is you know you can simply understand this if this is the iris then here must be ciliary body right and here comes the anterior ciliary artery by piercing the sclera and through the you know 
uh, super accordion space. Okay, just remember, just remember, I've told nothing till now, just that the anterior ciliary arteries come here and makes a bundle and then it pierces to the sclera some of them supplies to the uh, you know conjunctiva and some of them pierce and um, goes through the suprachoroidal space okay goes through the suprachoroidal space just before the limbus okay just understand this now you see there's uh, some minutes before I told that these anterior ciliary arteries anastomose with the um, long posterior ciliary arteries right yeah this ciliary anterior ciliary arteries you know these anterior ciliary arteries and coming near the okay near the okay you see near the uh, ciliary muscles or anterior end of ciliary muscles they anastomose with the long posterior ciliary arteries now let's see what they do by meeting here okay and now let's see here what they do suppose this is your sclera okay this is your sclera and uh, this is your choroid okay now let's see the anterior ciliary arteries okay i'm coming here the anterior ciliary arteries okay the anterior ciliary arteries and the long posterior ciliary arteries they you know anastomose in this fashion okay the anastomose and you know what they do they give this way your branches okay they give branches in this fashion they give branches in this fashion you know it's beautiful right it's very funny too to see this much beautiful creation of the nature now you see they again make a circle okay, they again make a circle this way now you see this is just a part of the blood vessels a network that i've drawn here these are you know the vessels that i do here but there are numerous of these kinds you know in the eye in the real anatomy that keeps the iris the cross the scene structure okay so and this bigger circle this bigger circle that we see which is formed by the anastomosis of the anterior ciliary artery and uh, long posterior ciliary arteries at the anterior end of the ciliary muscles right and this bigger circle is called circulus arteriosus major and this smaller one this smaller one is called circulus arteriosus minor okay this is the arterial supply of the evil tract and ever wondered if this is the arterial supply then what may be the venous drainage let's see here venous drainage you know the venous drainage is simple the bends from the iris the bends from the choroid sorry ciliary body and the bends from the choroid these all come and uh, you know they you know they meet at one point and from this point we call it vortex pain okay vortex pain but uh, for easiness i showed only one vortex pain but actually there are four vortex pain okay 
here full vortex vein and this full vortex vein parses this sclera okay this vortex vein um, okay this uh, vortex vein suppose um, yeah it, this is the iris this is the ciliary body and this is the choroid and uh, and uh, this is the sclera okay and the veins from here and here and here joins and this parses the sclera four of them parses the sclera okay and this parses the sclera only behind the equator of the eye and do you know the equator of the eye uh, let me show you if this is an eye this is cornea and uh, this you know imagine your line and this is for you yeah this okay this this is the equator geometrical this is geometrically quite from the eye yeah this vortex pane these pires this clearer behind the equator okay and this vortex pane comes from behind the equator comes out from behind the equator okay and this vortex pane drain into the superior and inferior ophthalmic vein superior and inferior ophthalmic vein Okay, and the superior and inferior of the alnic vein, they finally, okay, and the superior and inferior of the alnic vein, they finally drain into the cavernous sinus. Okay, now here we come at the end of the blood supply of the evil tract.